In this video, I'll show you how you can create a permission Ethereum network with Hyperledger Bezu. The permission network will allow you to control not only which node are allowed to participate, but also which Ethereum addresses are allowed to send transactions. Hey, I'm Julian, and on my channel Eat the Blocks, I teach blockchain development and how to find your first blockchain job. So before we start this tutorial, there are two prerequisites. First, you need to have installed Bezu. Check out this video if you don't know how to do it, and you also need to have curl install or any utility that can send some HTTP request. So we'll create a network with three Ethereum nodes. So in our project folder, we're going to create a folder for each node. So let's create a folder for the first node. Then same thing for second node. And finally, last node. So each node will be identified by an address and we need to get the address of the first node to put it in the Genesis file, which will be used to create the Genesis block, the first block of the blockchain. So you'll go here. This is the documentation of Bezu for creating a permission network. And you need to scroll down until this section get address of node one. So we will copy this comment here and that will export the address of the first node in this file here. So let's go back to our terminal and we go into node one. Then you run the command. I'm not running it on my computer because I've already done it before, but you should see some output here. And after, if you check at in data node address one, then here you should see the address of the node. So next, back to the documentation of Bezu, and we need to create the Genesis file. So this file will be used to configure our blockchain, and in particular, it will help us to create the Genesis block, which is the, the first block of the blockchain. So let's see a little bit what we have inside. So here we define the consensus protocol. So we're going to use the click consensus protocol. That's a proof of authority protocol. So that means that in order to add blocks to the blockchain, you need to be pre-approved. It's different from proof of work. Then here we have extra data and this alloc key that allows to define some uh, addresses and private key to which we want to, um, to add some ether. So this allow you to have a um, pre-funded accounts like in Ganache so that it's easier for development. And here we specify the balance and that's pretty much it. So you're going to copy all of this. Then in your terminal, you're going to create a file called click genesis.json at the root of the project. Then you're going to open it. Then you're going to paste the configuration inside. And here in the extra data key here, you need to replace node one address. So let's go back to node one and we're going to read the address of the node one like this. And I'm going to use a utility called PB copy to copy it into my clipboard. But if you want, you can just copy it with any other method. Then back to my file. And here I'm going to paste this. So I just need to remove the zero X of the address here. So zero X. Okay. Is remove. And let's remove this as well. And let's save this and exit. Then let's go back to the documentation of Bezu. And we're going to scroll down. And next, we're going to create a permissions configuration file. So in this file, we're going to define find the Ethereum addresses that are allowed to send transaction to our private blockchain. So we're going to copy this and we're going to create a file called permissions underscore config dot Then let's open this and we're going to copy everything. Then we're going to copy this file in the data folder of each node. Then back to the documentation of Bezu, let's scroll down. And so now we're going to start the different nodes. So here we have the command to start the first node. So we're going to go inside the folder of node one. So we specify uh, where the data of the blockchain should be saved inside the data folder. Then we specify what is the Genesis file. Then 
here are these two options permission node config file enable and permission account blah, blah, blah. config file enable uh, these two options allow you to use the permissioning feature of uh, Bezu. Then here at PCHTP enable, we enable the Ethereum API of Ethereum. Uh, and here we specify exactly which API we want. And here the important part is the click uh, option. So that's how we specify the click consensus protocol. And here these two options means that you can access your, your node from anywhere, but in a pr production environment, you probably want to be more restrictive. We're going to copy this and back to our terminal. Let me clear this. So let's go inside the folder of node one and paste our command and run it. And node one is starting. Then back to the documentation of Bezu. Let's scroll down and we're going to find the command for running the second node. So it's almost the same command as before, except that the port for the peer-to-peer -peer protocol is different and also the port the port for the Ethereum API is different in order to uh, to not conflict with the previous node. So back to the terminal and we're going to create a new terminal. We go inside the node 2 folder, we pass the command, we run it and now node 2 is also running. So back to the documentation of Bezu, we scroll down, we find the command for running the node number 3 exactly the same option as before except that once again the ports are different we copy the command back to the terminal we create a new terminal go inside the folder of node 3 paste the command run it and now all our nodes are running in our private network next we need to add the address of the different nodes in the permission file of each node so we're going to start with node one. So we're going to scroll up in the output until you find something that is called enode. So you're going to copy this, then you paste it somewhere. And we're going to do the same thing for the enode of node two. So we find it, copy it, paste it, and same thing for the enode of node three. Then you go back to the documentation of Bezu, you scroll down until you find the instruction to add the inode URL for each node. So there is one instruction per node and for each node, we're going to add the inode of the, the three nodes. So we copy the instruction for the first node, same thing for node two and node three. Then we replace the placeholder in node one, two, three by the real value. We copy the command, we run it. So that is for node one. And then we repeat the operation for node two and node three. Then back to the documentation of Bezu, let's scroll down. The next operation we need to do is to add nodes as peers. So with the private network we have set up, there is no boot nodes. So we need to tell each node what are the other nodes of the network, otherwise it doesn't know. So for this, we're going to use this API admin at peer. So you need to do it for node two, then you need to do it for node three two time because first you specify one enode and in the second instruction you specify another enode and this is not possible to send one command for two enode. The name of the method here is at peer, which is singular. So you copy this command, you replace the, the placeholder, do this on your terminal. And then the final step would be to confirm that the permission network is working. So for that, you're going to copy this curl command and you should see this output here. So if you want to push this tutorial even further, what you can do is to try to send a transaction from an account that is inside the whitelist. So you can check out this other video where I explain how to use Bezu and send transaction to it using Truffle. And you can also try to send a transaction that is not from an account in the whitelist and it should fail. Another cool tutorial that I will not cover in this series on Hyperledger Bezu in, is how to configure a network for private transaction. So you can check out this tutorial that will show you how to do this. The prerequisite is that first you need to set up a network with the, a private network with the IBFT 2.0 uh, protocol. So I have another uh, tutorial that uh, explain this. Another interesting thing is how to configure your private network to not use any gas because usually in a private network 
use the proof of authority consensus and so uh, there is no risk of your uh, network uh, being a, a spam so you can configure this by using this configuration in your genesis file and if you are interested between what is the difference between a uh, click and IBF, ibft 2.0 which are the, the two proof of uh, of authority consensus protocol offered by by bezu then you can check out this uh, explanation so if you haven't seen the other video of this series on hyperledger i really encourage you to check out this playlist where you'll find a lot of really really cool stuff i'll see you there